right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mystery Theater Team Void Dweller. Welcome back to 428 Shibuya Scramble. Last time. Tama and the new fighter girl got into a big brawl. But I ain't the witch's sword and thief or nothing. And she freaking showed her amazing badass martial arts skills, with which were foreshadowed. By the way, so yeah, it's not completely out of nowhere. And actually won the fight. I didn't, I didn't even think, I, I, I'll be honest, when I was choosing that, I did not think that was going to be the correct answer. I, I really thought that was just going to be a funny loss, and I wanted to see the funny way she lose before we chose the mundane correct way. But nope, she got all the shit back, and of course the friggin' uh, display turned out to be a disaster, as we all knew it would. And, but the big reveal was that, yes, she does have amnesia. Oh, God, this microphone is not being very nice today. There we go. Okay, I hope you guys didn't hear that too much. Uh, so, yeah, she's... I am 99% certain that she's the sister. Hello, Chi-Chan! Woo! So happy you're here. Let's get back into it. Now, where were we up to, Tama Chan? What? Who is this dark Tama? Okay, now let's see. Uh, see, I find that that character select screen a bit superfluous. Simply because. Like, this is much more useful for choosing who to go to. Okay, Minorikawa. It's on you. Let's see some master level reporting. Ah, I'm so happy that you're here. Okay, back to this. I guess we make the same choice again. Well, I'm gonna start a ruckus! He kept his voice firm, his words short and clipped. Ugh. I forget who's tell you who he's talking to. Uh, is, is it the boss? Uh, I'm gonna assume it is. Hey now, no need for that, sir. Just settle down. Now who doesn't like a silly little magic show now and then? You've got two minutes. I'm in a hurry. Hey, a minute like can't have passed already. One minute. Yeah, it is him. Whoa! Just what kind of watch you got there, sonny? Tell me why the demo isn't starting. Uh, well, uh, you know, her <laughs> no real reason, really. The man was getting seriously flustered. I just, you know, I want folks, folks to get to see a little magic show first. Nope. Try again. 30 seconds left. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Well, what happened is, uh, the required merchandise, uh, what happened to the merchandise? Minorikawa demanded. He gave the guy a dagger stare. Huh, well, you know, it's just, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, Nelly. Time's up! What? The man's face went pale. Keep out! Son of a fuck. Why didn't it just give us a keep out before if it was gonna do that? Seriously? Seriously? Seriously. Kano is still at a bad end. Keep out. Uh... Oh no. Oh no. 
What do we do? God, it happened again! Oh, fuck. I hate the forced jumps. The whole jumping thing. You know what the jumping thing reminds me of? The jumping things remi reminds me of that that feature that everybody forgets was in Danganronpa 1. What they called an ask system. Like, where instead of it just being part of the fucking dialogue that goes forward, the main character asks questions, you literally have to highlight a specific word in uh, the character's dialogue to have Makoto ask them something. Which is was kind of silly because there was, you had to do that to progress the game, but there was no wrong answers, so it was extremely pointless. Uh, or alternate paths either, so it was just extremely pointless and was gotten rid of in all future installments. And everybody forgets it, ex it exists until they see a Let's Play and say, Oh wow, I forgot that stupid thing was in there. I, uh, alright, never mind, just back to this, but yeah. I, I get why they have the jumps, but forcing them, I don't like that. Here we go. It's not even letting me do it! Fucking hell! Uh, no, I want to go back. How do I get back to this fucking... S okay, here we go. Panic over. That can't be it. That's way too far back. Ugh. No, that's really far back, too. Uh, Osawa, do you have any jumps? No. Uh, nope. Ain't working. I'm gonna try this one. Okay. Ah, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You're late. What the heck have you been doing? Oh, come on. I don't understand what. <sighs> Seriously. I swear, I'm gonna have to jump from here, aren't I? And there's literally no reason why I should have to, because I've seen what happens and unlocked it. <sighs> Mr. Yonaga Mr. Yonagashita practically throws himself at me! The wind must have been killing him. Here we go. And now I can jump. Clearly that was so fucking important. Oh, <laughs> Why did I have to do that? Why? Ah, they weren't like. Ah, oops! Sorry to keep you waiting! A girlish voice exclaimed. A moment later, a furry figure came charging into the demo room. The crowd fell silent as the sight of a young woman in a cat costume. The cat girl panted visibly. Ah, 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 ah. Her arms were loaded with cardboard boxes. You're late! The event organizer snapped. What the heck have you been doing? Oh, would you believe how fun? If I said I'd been getting into epic battles for the fate of these burning hammers? No. Well, uh, I got into an epic battle. For the fate of the burning hammers. I don't believe it. Ah, oh, fine, whatever. Grabbing the newcomer by one paw, he vanished with her into the back room. The chubby cheeked girl wrapped up her magic routine and hurried after them. The audience stared at the now empty stage in confusion. How is the music? Can you guys hear the music okay? Yes, Tama is now Mr. Shakedown! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's 
Several minutes passed before the organizer reappeared. Ladies, terrible sorry to have kept you waiting. He called out. But now, I'm proud to introduce y'all to the worldwide sensation that is Burning Hammer! At a signal, the young woman and the cat appeared on stage. Allow us to explain just how this revolutionary new diet drink works its magic. Oh, that was God damn it, that was her. Allow us to explain just how the revolutionary new diet drink works its magic. The young woman exclaimed cheerily. The cat nodded and threw out her arms. For the first time in human history, you can drink a single bottle and lose a whole kilogram! Just drink and drink and burn that excess weight away! And with that, the sales demo was underway, a good 25 minutes behind schedule. Five minutes into the presentation, things began to go awry. An angry clamor filled the room. What the heck are you trying to pull? Can't believe you actually tried to sell something like this. The outrage has been triggered by something the young woman on stage has said. She inadvertently let slip that the burning hammer was the sort of thing you could buy at 100 yen shop. And look, it certainly has the packaging of something you'd buy in a dollar store. The would be customers were furious to learn that they were about to be played for suckers. Most of them had immediately tried to storm out of the room. Now, the organizer, the full figured young woman, and the girl in the cat costume are at the door, doing their best to hold back the tie. Things had gotten pretty interesting, really. He could definitely write an article about this. Minori Kawa pulled out his digital camera and started firing off snapshots of, snapshots of the angry crowd. Some modern digital cameras come with remarkable ability to automatically trigger the shutter when the subject smiles. This function also works if the camera is presented with a TV or photo image of people smiling. There are even cases of cameras recognizing faces in the wood grain of ceilings. After all, we can make out faces in the wood when we're lazy gazing lazily up at the ceiling. We can't fault a camera for doing the same. Exactly, Mystery Theater. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. Modern, yeah, 2009 modern. Unfortunately, their frenzy was so intense that he was soon caught up with the flow and pushed out of the room. Fly! I guess I'll just need to do some interviews instead of getting pictures. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, one woman. Would you mind if I asked you some? Shut your mouth! Would you mind telling me a little about? Don't y'all talk to me? Could I get a word on? Unbelievable! Just unbelievable! The women were so enraged that Minori Kawa couldn't get any of them to give him the time of day. Before long, the entire crowd had surged out of the room and departed. Oh well. Guess I got enough to do a write-up at least. Though it would be nice to get a quote from somebody. He decided to try for an interview with the man who'd organized this fiasco. How did the guy feel, for instance? About his product scam falling through. <laughs> Heading back into the event room, Minorikawa passed by the cat mascot. Another fucking jump. Hopefully we don't have to do this one. The cat gave him a tiny nod and walked off without a word. He couldn't see the face of the girl inside the costume. But she seemed genuinely de dejected. That burning hammer had been a bust.
Hey, I'm Minoru Minorikawa, freelance reporter. I was wondering if I could have five minutes of your time. The organizer sat alone in the midst of its ruined displays. Oh, it's you. The man's voice had lost all of its earlier punch. Here, my credentials. Oh, that was Minorikawa. Here, my credentials. Minorikawa handed him a business card. Same, Mystery Theater. It feels like it's better uh, material for a story than if it had gone well. The man introduced himself as Yanagashida, and Minorikawa got right down to business. So, your sales demo is over, Mr. Yanagashida. How do you feel right now? How do I feel? Well, tomorrow is another day, I guess. Minorikawa was impressed by the guy's candor. Hello, Owe. I thought you had to go to sleep. If you needed to rest, um, please do, but I love that you're here as well. Well, I'm a little surprised to hear that, he said. I figured you'd be more disappointed. Oh, I'm plenty disappointed. I took a big gamble here to repay my debts, and I lost. Yanagashida didn't seem to be trying to hide anything. Deaths? Minorikawa asked. There was a girl I was in love with. Yanagashita said, oh, this is new. He didn't say that before. I thought it was gambling debts. I wound up spending everything on her. He stared wistfully into the distance. Ah, interesting. Minorikawa said. You wouldn't be the first man to go to such lengths for a woman. Yeah. Yanagashita said. I suppose not. A rueful smile crossed his lips. This guy didn't strike Minorikawa as some dyed-in-the-wool scam artist. But I decided that it was time to stop feeling sore for myself. Yanagashi went on. There are plenty of people in the world who have it way worse off, you know, like people with amnesia. Oh my god, you're right. Oh, that that's true. He might like the girl, the, the fighting girl. I forgot her name. You got that right. Minorikawa nodded in agreement. So I uh, just figure, well... As long as I'm still alive, maybe another opportunity will come my way. A more earnest smile broke through Yanagashita's forlorn expression. Minorikawa wished Toyama could have been here to see there to hear this fellow. I have a friend who's in incredible amount of debt myself, Minorikawa said. He runs a publishing company, but there was a big mix-up with the scratch cards in his magazine, and... Scratch cards? It's not important. Minorikawa said hurriedly. Letting more people know about the whole scratch card fiasco certainly wouldn't do Toyama any favors. Anyhow, debt is a terrible thing. Minorikawa nodded sagely. Oh, well, uh, by the way... This is unrelated, but are you familiar with a group called the SOS Brigade? Apparently, there's some legendary street gang in here in Shibuya. SOS? Yanagashita shook his head. No, I never heard of him. Guess I'm not going to get any leads on that case here. Oh, hello, Advanced Slam. Welcome to the stream. Ah, thank you. I try. Always trying to get better, though. Minorikawa wondered if there was anything else worth asking this guy. 
Uh, let's see. Of course I'm going to ask him to take the survey. Maybe Yanagashida would be willing to take a Shibuya Now survey. That's true. That wasn't the survey. It was about, like, are you happy with your life? That, that like... That might give him an idea of something he could do. Taking a little bit of the burden off of Chiaki seemed like a good idea. I have another question. How do you feel about your life right now? Huh? How do you feel about your life? Your products aren't selling. You can't repay your debts. And yet you still refuse to give up. Believing opportunity will come your way. How do you feel about all that? Yanagashida paused and thought. I'd say I'm a pretty lucky guy. Minorikawa was taken somewhat aback by that response. I haven't been able to sell any burning hammer. And sure, I can't pay off my debts. But even so... Yanagashida looked Minorikawa right in the eye. The two cute young girls I got working for me have stuck with me through thick and thin. Sometimes maybe you just need to be content with something like that, you know? That was refreshingly forthright. Minorikawa was surprised. He is such a sweet guy, totally. I hope he gets some prize money or something to pay off his debts. And I mean, so what if I got debts? Yanagashita Yana went on. In the long run, none of that matters. Not really. Oh, somebody's here. Her name was Miku. How could I forget? Miku Hatsune. It was a knock at the door. Thank you, Mystery Theater. Oh, uh, excuse me a moment. Yanagashita said. I wonder who that could be. I, it might be the Yakuza guys. He opened the door and his face froze. Damn, wasn't quite quick enough. Her, Mr. Minorikawa? Yes? Y'all have to pardon me. I had a little something crop up here, so if y'all don't mind... Oh, sure. Not a problem. Is that an Australian flag in the background? <laughs> I got... Oh, that was him saying that. Oh, sure. Not a problem. I've got any interviews I need to get to anyway, so I'll just... But Yanagashida was out of the door before Norikawa could even finish. Stepping out into the hallway, Minorikawa could finally hear voices from the adjoining, faintly hear voices from the adjoining demo room. Yeah, it's the Yakuza guys. It sounded like Mr. Yanagashida and two other men. Minorikawa couldn't make any, any words, but he could tell they were arguing about something. I hope he saves them. Him, sorry. It was probably some consumer complaint about against one of his products. Or an issue with a client company. Something along those lines. Man, people who run companies sure have it rough. You hang in there, Mr. Yanagashita. Who's saying this? Oh, perfect timing! Minoriko was stopped short as a former voice called out to him. A familiar voice. Yeah, I hope he's safe too. Oh, God. Maybe Achi can come in and save him. It was the man he'd spoken to earlier that afternoon about the surveillance cameras. Hey, uh, come here for a sec. The man waved him over. Oh, what is it? Oh, I'm real busy right now. I've got a scoop for you. So, with my own eyes. That's true, the big fight. Minorikawa raised an eyebrow. 
Give me the details. Maybe, Jichan. That's possible. But look at what a... I don't know if that was necessarily the wrong choice, because, like, look at what a... Look at how it's affected. Like, he got, like, some new uh, responses and everything. Okay, so a little while ago, I saw some foreign guy in handcuffs arguing with someone who looked like a detective. Whoa! Okay, this is different. Wow. A foreigner in handcuffs. Had there been some kind of international sting or something? Whatever the case, it wasn't such a rare thing to see. Where was this? Just over there. Behind the police station. Minorikawa furred his brow. A suspect arguing with a cop outside a police station wasn't all that weird. Still, he had a feeling he was missing something here. Okay, so the, he's going to intersect with Kano. Well, the big thing is what happened afterward, the man said. Afterward? The man leaned in conspiratorially. Uh, the detective undid the guy's handcuffs and let him run off. Whoa! Oh my god! Oh my god. Could that be Sasayama? Is Sasayama the boss? Is he the traitor in the police? I wonder. Maybe that's not Kano, but Sasayama. Or it could be Kano, and he had a good reason for that, for some reason. Whoa, what? I'm telling you, man. That had to have been like a bribe or something. A bribe? That seemed unlikely. I swear that's what it had to be. Uh, there was some wheel greasing going on. You're not making this all up, are you? Minorikawa asked. He regarded the man coldly, but the guy still seemed quite legitimately worked up. It's all true. Please, you have to report this to the police right away. Why do I have to? Minorikawa asked. If you have a tip for the police, go give it yourself. Well, he is being kind of rude because he wanted to give him a story, but he also has a point. I mean, it's better the information to be firsthand rather than secondhand. And he can even describe the people to the police for so they can make a sketch. He didn't quite manage to stop himself from saying that out loud. No, I can't. I'm no good when it comes to police. Besides, they're never going to believe someone like me. Well, why wouldn't they? He's just a shop owner. Okay, so maybe you had a point there. But you, uh, you're some world-class reporter, right? The cops will totally take your word over that of a random nobody. Hello, Eblis. Welcome to the stream. Minorikawa didn't have to have time to debate the point. It was easier just to make the call. He phoned up the police to leave the tip. The man bowed repeatedly, looking pretty grateful. Oh, thank you so much. I haven't been able to get any business done with those scary thugs around. What thugs? What line of business are you in anyway? Whoa. The man suddenly went pale. I, uh, whoops. What is he talking about? There's all this shit going on that we don't know. I gotta get going. Is he really like, was the dollar store a front? What in the world is going on here? He skittered off in alarm. Oh, that's right. When he met Achi, he was picking stuff up around. T that's true. Okay, I forgot that. Thank you, Eblis. Minorikawa was left to wonder what this guy's line of work actually was. But he had more important things to worry about at the moment. He hurried off in the other direction. 
Please tell me if you can hear the music. Before long, he arrived back at, back at Café La Trek. I love this kind of music, seriously. I remember one time when we just had a relaxing day home, I put on one of those um, cafe music vibes uh, in the background, playing off of the TV while I did shit. It was the most relaxing thing ever. And of course I made myself a coffee to match. You can hear it fine? Okay, just making sure. The clock on the wall showed that it was close to two o'clock. He had to somehow fill six more pages before the loan company came to Heaven Publishing to collect. He booted up his laptop. Okay, who's saying? I don't know. A low stern voice could be any number of people. Oh, what's with this coffee shop? Said a low stern voice. You've got no good magazines here. Minorikawa looked up. Oh, okay. They're here again. Jeez. <laughs> what would this coffee shop? An older man was complaining to one of the waitresses. It was the same guy who had been yelling at his daughter earlier. Evidently, he'd been here at the cafe this whole time. I remember one time when I was in my, uh, when I was in my 20s. And uh, I had a lot more free time. Probably one of my favorite things to do was when I had like a big full day and nothing in the background, I would take my 3DS and uh, my phone. And if I was lucky, a manga or a novel that I was reading and go sit in a nice comfortable booth in a dark restaurant by myself for hours and just keep getting refills on uh, on my uh, Diet Coke which didn't have any calories sometimes order an appetizer but my god that again is my happy place seriously just oh god I just that that's probably one of my favorite things in the world to do I haven't been able to do it in quite a while. Mostly due to Australia's lack of booth restaurants. But. Seriously. That is my fucking happy place. Robert, you got any magazines for me to read? The man's face was, was a mask of irritation. Minorikawa glanced at the magazines in the rack. They were mostly geared toward a younger reader. The waitress stiffed it through the, sifted it through the stacks and pulled something from the back. Um, perhaps this would be to your liking, sir? She said. She held out an issue of four-star general gossip. Don't be ridiculous. The man spat dismissively. This is vulgar, low-grade filth. I wouldn't even use the paper it's printed on for compost. That was a harsh way to put it. But Minorikawa couldn't fault him for speaking the truth. <laughs> there aren't that many Starbucks here, Void Dweller, sadly. But I love going when I get the chance. Yeah. Australia hates booths for some reason. Why do they hate the booths? The man continued grumbling as he went back to his seat. There's no Wendy's in Australia, Void Dweller, but that's okay, because Wendy's was my least favorite of uh, all the fast food places. We have Burger King, we have McDonald's, and KFC, and Subway. And I don't mind, because I never really liked Wendy's that much. I vastly prefer um, McDonald's and Burger King. 
But Burger King is always my top, gonna be my top favorite of fast food places. But I, I don't like to hang out at fast food places. I like to hang out at like those mid-level restaurants. Jichan, have you seen the seats at Hog Breath Cafe? They are literally medieval torture devices. They don't have booze there. Seriously, I sat on one for a while. I tried going there. My back was killing me for a while. There is Subway Void Dweller. Anyway, back to the story. Minorikawa headed over to the magazine rack himself and picked up the gossip. It's a very nicely designed cover. I mean, I don't consider Subway in the same, you know, uh, in the same category. Because it's, it's not like the same kind of thing. Subway is like a completely different thing. I'll, if, if I'm, if I'm being health conscious, I'll, I'll eat at Subway. But, um, I'm, I'm talking about mainly like fast food type things, you know, unhealthy stuff. Burger King is my top favorite of those. He opened the front cover and found the scratch card still inserted within. Oh, don't say that, Ji-chan. Pretty much everything else about Australia I absolutely love. If these things were still out there, it was bad news. Toyama might end up even further in debt. Is, is that him saying ba? Bruh! Oh, that, oh that, that's Minorikawa. Bah! Minorikawa would yank the scratch card out and tore it to bits. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mystery Theater. Uh, sir, what are you doing? The waitress rushed to stop him, only for the pieces to be ringed down on her like confetti. The magazine itself is still perfectly readable, Minorikawa said. There's no problem here. He strode back to his seat and gave to his laptop screen. The thing is, with Australia, they have way too many, um... hoity-toity restaurants, like, for rich people. And... It seems to be mainly that or fast food. And there's so few, if any, mid-level places or nice sit-down pubs. It's really sad. But other than that, I love Australia. He stro strode back to his seat and gazed at his laptop screen. It still hadn't finished booting up. In the meantime, he decided to give Chiaki a call. She picked up right away. Hello? Minorikawa asked. Hi there. Uh, good to hear from you. Chiaki replied. How's progress? Progress. Blah, blah. I did it! Chiaki said, her voice overcome with emotion. I managed to get Of course you did. You got your pointers from me, the ultimate reporter. Yes! I couldn't have done it without you, Mr. Vita! <laughs> Her mood had done a complete 180. Minorikawa allowed himself a little sigh of relief. Hello, Hollow Hello, Mirage. Welcome to the stream. Okay, then. He said. Head back to the editing department and put together an article for me. Hello, Soars. Welcome to the stream. You got it, sir! Chiaki choked in reply. I'll email you- Oh, that's him saying that. I'll email you as soon as I'm done with things on my end. Minorikawa told her. 
Just use the DTP to slot your piece in the right spot on the layout. Now that's something I don't know what it is. Abbrevi abbreviation for desktop publishing. Refers to the process of editing a manuscript layout on a computer. Preparatory to sending it to the printer. Also used to refer to the software used for creating such layouts. Creating layout data that is ready for printing but has not yet been actually printed yet is also sometimes called DTP. Sure thing! Minori Kawa hung up and rolled up his sleeves. Huh. He sure was towing a pretty narrow line today. The burning hammer event had kept him in a little longer than anticipated. Now he needed to clean up his coffee as soon as possible in order to stick to his schedule. Uh-oh, what's going on? When he turned back toward his laptop, however, he was frozen with shock. What's going on? What?! His laptop monitor was still a black, empty screen. There's no way it would take this long to finish booting up. Uh-oh, he didn't charge it. Oh, it couldn't be. No, don't let it be true. How does the computer decide to pick now of all times to get up a ghost? Can you check if it charged first? Did you plug it in? Minori Kawa felt the blood drain from his face. Is this a bad end? Oh, okay. Oh, it's just to be continued. Okay, good. Woo! Oh, wow. We actually reached the end of uh, Minori Kawa's story. Okay, let's see who else has been unlocked. Kano is still a bad end. My god. Hello, NGH. Welcome to the stream. Achi is still keeped out. Tama is still keeped out. It's really going to make me do this. It's really going to make me fucking do this. <sighs> uh, at least I'm getting used to it. Can't just continue normally. We have to use your awesome jump feature. It's like, I can imagine like the developers talking is like, like one of the head guys in charge of programming being like, and you know what guys, you know what? And, uh, I, I, you know, I know, I know what voice to give this one. And you know what guys, <laughs> I'm going to put in a feature that's called jump. It'll let people jump from story to story. Wouldn't that be exciting? I'm the greatest programmer that ever lived. <laughs> and then the, the other program was just saying, oh, wouldn't that just be kind of annoying and kind of forced on the player instead of just letting the story flow naturally? I assume people will want to keep going on the story they're already on, uh, getting to a choice point or a point that they're stopped before moving on to someone else's. No! I swear they have to use Jump! They have to! I'm the greatest programmer that ever lived! And I swear I am just going to force them to use the Jump! Even if they get lost! <laughs> oh, fine. Whatever. All right, let's do it, Erica. <sighs> Fucking hell. Um, Holly? I passed by the man I'd noticed earlier. The one I didn't recognize. Odd. The SEALs demo's over. I wonder why he's still here. I give him a faint nod and he nods back before slipping into the demo room. I should keep my fingers crossed for the guy. At last, I'm back outside the building. I feel bad about not returning the cat suit to the man for the rental place. See, I can't just go walk around town wearing this thing. I'll stick out like a sore thumb. I imagine if you choose for her not to, uh, uh, to try to take the costume off, then she's going to get kidnapped or something. I figure it's best to just leave it behind. And then it dawns on me. Hold on, I still couldn't get this thing off! Yes, Evil Tama!
Okay, now I can make the same choice again. Get this cat stain in the bed. I had to figure out how to knick knock shop as is. Besides, they wouldn't even recognize her um, as the person from before to claim the necklace without the cat suit. They would have no idea who it is. Stuck in the cat box, once again. Keep out, keep out, bad end. Okay, wh what was, let me, let's check the bad end again. There's someone who can cause a traffic jam at 1310, but you can't be stupid for meeting such a grisly end. Is it Archie? I'll see if it's Archie. It was true that his actions didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. He seemed more interested in taking out the man with the cane than going after you. Ugh. I guess I'll choose A. I... Wow. Eblis. No, I, I, I'm pretty... Yeah, I'm pretty sure what's gonna happen. Oh, not for the reasons I think, really. Damn. You, okay, we'll see a, a creepy bad end to see the other choice with Tama. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Let's go. You know what? Uh, Alright, we'll see a creepy bad end with Tama. You ready? It's time I skew this cat! I need to get rid of this costume, whatever it takes! Can we get a glossary for that? The exact origin of the phrase? There's more than one way to skin a cat is uncertain, and a matter of some dispute. Though it appears to have arisen in the latter portion of the 19th century, it's hard to imagine why anyone would want to conjure up such a gruesome mental image. I was thinking that mystery theater is like, what is it gonna be like? The suit was, it's gonna be some freaky ass shit. Like we're getting into some magical shit. I need to get rid of this costume, whatever it takes. I take hold of the head in both hands. Oh, yeah. I take hold of the head in both hands. I'm yanking it up with as hard as I can. Uh huh. Please tell me I'm not just imagining things. The head feels a whole lot looser than it did before. If I give it a good enough push, then maybe... Yeah! It comes off! I cheat it! I sip out of the rest of the cat costume and gleefully abandon it as I for the knick-knack shop, patty walk, give a dog a bone! Oh, it's a keep out still. Okay, we don't get to see the bad end. Sorry, uh... Uh, you know what? Okay, that didn't even give me the fucking bad end. I am at a loss. Okay, 12, 13, 10. Somebody's making a choice to do something. 
we already did both of these choices, and the only way for him to pro to progress forward, so that can't be the choice. Uh, let's see. Is it with Osawa? I I guess it's with Osawa. All right, Osawa said. He had no choice but to fall in line. It would be around 10 p.m. local time for the American firm. He decided to call his contact's personal phone. The headhunter was shocked to hear that Osawa wanted to decline the position. When he pressed for the reasons behind the decision, Osawa hung up. Visibly relieved, Makino lit up a fresh cigar. Sir, there's one thing I don't understand. And what's that? Osawa's head was feeling fuzzy. The smoke inside the vehicle had gotten extremely thick. If someone had this top secret information, why wouldn't they threaten the company as a whole? Oh, that's... oh, sorry. If someone had this top secret information, why wouldn't they threaten the company as a whole? Why send those emails to me, personally? I'm not sure. <laughs> There's an internal investigation already underway. We'll find the source of the leak soon enough. At this point, though, Osawa wasn't sure knowing who originally leaked the info mattered much at all to him. If you'll beg my pardon then, sir. Osawa said. He put his hand on the door handle. That sudden high-pitched chirp. Okay, this this is the same. Let's see if that changed it. No, it didn't change a goddamn thing. Was that a pointless choice? Osawa is still the same. Of course... Oh, th welcome to the streams, Armegas. And of course, it's gotta be the fucking motherfucking Shonen Jump. Oh, seriously. Is it, is it that one jump to Achi there? Why are there so many fucking jumps? I'm going to try this jump here. Alright, we'll see this uh, for Achi. Oh god, no, I... I passed it because it was a jump inside a fucking glossary entry. There we go. Let's try it. I, that was it. That was what I needed to progress. God. luck would have it. They soon found a crowd in their path. Backs turned toward them. Excited voices rose up from the throng. Whoa! What's the deal? Is something going on? It's a street fight! A fight, as the name implies, that takes place out on the street. Typically using bare hands and no weapons. Even a bare-handed fight can result in serious injuries, though. 
Which is why they're pretty illegal. Archie clutched Yutomi's hand good and tight. Ah. <laughs> Seriously. I Archie is such a sweetie. Whatever you do, don't let go. Without a moment's hesitation, he plowed his way through the crowd. Emerging on the far side of the gathering, Achi saw the main road ahead. Cars were zipping past in a steady stream. What do we do? There were too many cars for them to rush across the street without getting hit. But they couldn't exactly just sit and wait for the light to change. And they certainly couldn't go back to the way they came. Exactly, Eblis. Their pursuers were getting closer and closer. Honestly, I love the way the different choices. Like, if you're saying uh, you think I, I don't like the, the gameplay as uh, in, in the visual novels, not at all. I love the I love the the idea of making choices that affect the other characters. That that is awesome. That is fucking awesome. And I totally don't mind being blocked by a keep out too because they want to tell the story in a specific sequence. What I really don't like is the jumps, because they are just completely unnecessary and superfluous. Hitomi! Achi shouted. Okay, yeah, we're okay, now we have to go across to cause the traffic jam. We're going across. What? Dragging Hitomi by the hand, Achi darted out into the street. Even purely by instinct, he wove his way through the gaps in between the speeding cars. Here we go, yep. When they were all halfway across, a car slammed on its brakes to keep from hitting them, causing several cars behind it to crash into one another. The multi-vehicle piled up, pile up, plunged the roadway into total chaos. You know what? I'm just gonna take this jump. Because I bet if I try to go back to Kano, it's going to not let me do anything. For literally no reason other than the fact that I, I didn't take the jump. Which is fucking stupid. The only bad part about this otherwise awesome game. As a result of this chaos, traffic in the nearby area will be at a standstill for a while. While on their way to the Syndicate hideout. hideout. Shinya Kano and Jack Stanley have gotten caught in the traffic jam. Even though I want to continue on Archie's story, I'm now super paranoid about the fucking jumps. Yes, Collider! Yes! Do the jump! Oh yeah, 13 Sentinels is like this, but five times more complicated, but yet it there's no there's no fucking jumps in 13 13 Sentinels. And yeah, 13 Sentinels did, is is very similar to this. And uh yeah, did it did the same type of thing really awesome. So, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, 13 Sentinels was inspired by this game. Cuz they're very similar in that aspect. The car moved at a glacial plate pace toward the crime syndicate's hideout. Stanley pounded his fist on the steering wheel in frustration. They had no sooner set out than the traffic slowed to a near standstill. Despite the occasional lurch, it never crept above a crawl. Kana stood in the passenger seat. The case was rapidly getting out of hand. Now we had to worry about the safety of both Maria and her sister Hitomi. Never mind the fact that Detective Tateno had also gone missing. As I said in the beginning, Detective Tateno is either going to be dead or the final boss.
He's yeah, he's gonna be either dead or the traitor. But I'd personally like it better if Sasayama was the traitor. Yeah, we'll see. We'll have to see. There were too many unknowns, too many uncertainties. His unease was growing unbearable. Also, uh, Totenu isn't radioed in. And, like, we can't reach him from our end either. Totally, dude. Kuze's words kept echoing inside Kano's head. What could have caused Tetano to drop out of contact? Someone had gone after Atomi while Kano and the others were busy trailing the attaché case. Could Tetano have been... No, it couldn't be. Kano was sure Tetano would have done whatever was necessary to keep Atomi safe. Stanley broke the long silence. What's on your mind? Still thinking about that call from Kuse? Kano didn't answer. Look. Oh, that's still him. Look, if you're worrying about that other detective, a guy couldn't even protect one girl. Stanley continued. Not exactly a ring and endorsement. Don't you talk about Detective Tateno that way. He's my senpai. I'm concerned about Atomi Osawa. But the missing attaché case needs to come first, son. Stanley's expression remained stone cold. Kano flashed him a sidelong glare, then went back to staring out the window. A moment later, a flurry of motion in a nearby alley caught his eye. With a start, he recognized Sasayama. His fellow detective was cut up with an altercation in a with an altercation with a man in dark clothes. Kano sprang into action, his body moving almost before his mind registered the situation. Sasayama! Flinging the door open, he left out of the car. Hey, wait! Stanley called after him. Akana was already sprinting toward the fight. <sighs> the other man knocked Sasayama onto a pile of garbage. As Sasayama struggled to get back to his feet, his opponent looked down at him with a triumphant sneer. Kano finally got a good look at the man, and his eyes flashed with recognition. It was the perp who'd first taken the attaché case back to the scramble. Tariq al Kawaran. Oh, it's the creepy dude. You! Kano growled. He sped like a bullet to tackle al Kawaran down around the legs. But al Kawaran nimbly stepped aside. Kano's arms closed on nothing but air. At the same moment, Alcaron deftly wrapped an arm around Kano's neck. Kano felt a vice-like pressure on his carotid artery. A move known as the front choke sleeper hold. Constricting the carotid arteries st stops blood flow to the brain, causing the opponent to lose consciousness, also known as a gu guillotine choke. His consciousness quickly began to slip away. Oh no you don't, you bastard! He snarled. Losing his low center of gravity, he got hold of one of al Kawaran's legs and used his shoulder as a fulcrum against it. Ugh. Despite the arm still crushing his neck, Kano managed to lift his opponent high into the air. Wow! Body slam! He continued the movement, moment to he movement to heave al Kawaran up and over himself. Slapping him up, slamming him upside down to the heap of trash. Time to take out the trash! Stanley sto strolled up to the aftermath of the struggle. Well, you got the brown part, Dan, at least, he said. Need some work on the brains. Al Kawaran was sprawled out atop the mound of refuse. He'd been knocked out cold. Wow. 
So this super threatening guy, I wonder if this is what the other guy saw. Sasayama coughed and sputtered. Kano went to help him to his feet, but Stanley stepped in between them. What are you doing? Stanley asked. Helping Sasayama. What does it look like? We need to apprehend Alcoran first, son. He's not even conscious. Sasayama can come first. He pushed Stanley aside and crouched down alongside his partner. Are you all right? He asked. Yeah. Sasayama groaned. You bailing me out, though? Can't let the missus know about that. Mum's the word, Kana said. He slipped an arm underneath Sasayama and helped him to his feet. I managed to find the guy who had the attache case, Sasayama said. But when I tried to arrest him, this fellow came out of nowhere and attacked me. He flashed Alcaran a nasty look. I wonder... How does this line up with what the other guy saw? Huh. So here we go again. Disobeying direct orders. Stanley huffed. Huh. What's the deal with Japanese police anyway? He shook his head in exasperation. Sasayama gave Kano a puzzled look, jerking his thumb at the American. Who's this guy? It's a long story, Kano said. He filled Sasayama in on the situation. Enough chit chat. Hurry up and cuff this guy, Stanley said. Kano knelt down by Alcaron's unconscious body, flipped him over and proceeded to cuff his hands behind his back. Huh. Oh. Huh? Kano paused. All Karan's sleeve has slid back from his wrist. He has a scorpion tattoo. What's this? Yep, this is just like uh, Yakuza. The unconscious man had a tattoo of a two-headed scorpion on his left forearm. Stanley strode over. You found some? He asked. Yes. I think this guy might be the ringleader. No way. If he's the ring... No, there's no way he's the ringleader if going ca getting captured this early in the story. Seeing the image and reminded of Kano of something he'd heard back at headquarters. that the head of the foreign syndicate had a scorpion tattoo. He relayed this information to Stanley. I uh, see. Stanley called up Kuze on his cell. You'll be happy to know that the guy with the attache case is still large, he said. Ever in the ring piece, the ringleader? At this point, it shouldn't be an issue. One of your oh-so-very capable subordinates gave us a big step forward in the case here. Wait a second, Sasayama murmured. That was sarcasm, wasn't it? Dang, Stanley's being a bit of an asshole. Stanley hung up and called over to him. Think you can escort this guy back to the precinct? Yeah, sure. Seeing how very capable I am. 
caught up on his phone bribery. The display showed an incoming call from Rumi. Hello? He answered wearily, keeping his voice down. Stanley had him a little on edge. It's me. It was Shizuo. Ah. Uh, okay. Damn it. Kano thought. He did not have time for this right now. But if he just hung up, he might be in even deeper hot water. Kano? Nah, I think we better hear what he has to say. Kano had decided he'd better listen to what the old man had to say. Hello, sir. I'm afraid I'm not really at liberty to take a personal call right now, even if it is from my father-in-law. He did his best to sound apologetic. I'm not your father-in-law. Ah, huh, yes, of course. Sorry, sir. He bowed his, head, bowed his head reflexively, feeling like an idiot. <laughs> yes, Evelyn. You really don't give a damn about keeping me waiting like this, do you? Come on, dude, he's working. Sir, I swear to you, I feel terrible. Please, I just... Flustered, he took a deep breath and recomposed himself. I promise you, sir. I promise I'll be there. If you could just wait a little while... Don't make promises you can't keep! Shizuo's barking rebuke made, Kaba made Kano break out in a sweat. You think I'm gonna let you off the hook just because you're working on a case? This is exactly why I don't want my daughter with some detective. God, man. Jeez. Great, another angry tirade. But didn't you used to be a detective, sir? Kano muttered. You watch yourself, you little brat! It's not enough that you keep calling me your father-in-law. Not that you have to bring that up. Evidently, Kano had touched a raw nerve. Oh, I guess he has some bad blood with the uh, police station. Ever had a dentist hit a nerve while drill drilling a tooth? That's where this expression comes from. It seemed like anything he said only made matters worse. Well, you're not off the hook. Shizuo continued. I am never letting my daughter marry the likes of you. Yeah, Shizuo definitely does has some kind of grudge or bad blood with the police, for sure. Absolutely. His fury hitting its crescendo. Shizuo promptly hung up. Why on earth did Shizuo hold such intense malice toward police detectives when he'd been one himself? Kano had become a detective for Ruby's sake in the first place, and now it's the biggest thing holding him back. Hey, come on, let's go. Oh, that was Stanley. Hey, come on, let's go! Stanley's voice snapped Kano out of his daze. Ugh. <sighs> Grimly, he followed the American back to the car. Yet again. Stanley was stump thumping the steering wheel in frustration. Traffic hadn't let up one bit. It was starting to look like they might never make it to the foreign syndicate's hangout. Kano got, si Kano got sight of a girl in a hoodie waving her way, weaving her way between the stopped cars on foot. He rolled down the window and called out to her. Miku Morita. Oh, girl, it's her. It was a fighter at the Cosplay Fighting Club Bride, but just decided to ret retire after losing to Tom with a cat in a street fight. 
She's thinking about what to do with herself now. Maybe she can become a detective. Excuse me, miss. Did something happen? Huh? What do you mean? With the road, I mean. What's with all the traffic? Oh, right. Apparently there was some big accident over by the train station. That's probably what's causing it. Really? Yeah. I don't think you guys are going to be going anywhere for quite a while. She smiled and went on her way. Stanley gave the steering wheel another punch. One punch! Well, I guess... Oh, that was Death Stanley talking. Well, I guess they did say this wasn't just some typical ransom case. He muttered. Kano saw an opportunity. If they're not after the money, then what are they after? Stanley kept his eyes forward, acting as if he hadn't heard. Oh, that's him saying that. If they aren't after the money, then what are they after? Look. Connor said. I can't help you if you keep me out of the loop. After a few moments of thought, Stanley replied with a single monosyllable. Drugs. In a manner of speaking, I guess, yeah. What? Maria's father, Kenji Usama. I assume you're aware he works for Okoshi Pharmaceutical. I am. Nothing's been made public yet, but Osawa recently oversold the development of a new drug. It is not un at all uncommon for a new drug to be in development for 15 years or more, with expenses totaling 20 to 30 billion yen. Yep, totally. FDA approval is a huge process. So many phases. And rightfully so. Roughly 200 to 300 million U.S. dollars before it's approved. Worldwide demand and sensational profits can be expected, expected if a groundbreaking medicine is developed. Nonetheless, pharmaceutical companies are often under major pressure due to the tremendous cost of labor and equipment. And someone is trying to get their hands on it. Kano's mind latched onto the new information trying to assemble the pieces of an involving puzzle. Someone? Who? An international criminal mastermind. This foreign syndicate is merely a tool in someone else's game. Wow! That is awesome. Connor regarded Stanley's face carefully. He looked more cold and serious than ever. So wait, does that mean that the reason we're letting this syndicate walk around unfettered He's on my oars. Yes. I see. So the only thing you're really concerned with is catching this international mastermind. Precisely. Connor felt like he was starting to get a picture of what sort of person Stanley was. So you don't really care about what happens to the girl who's been abducted, abducted, do you? Not particularly, no. Why, do you have a problem with that? Connor clenched his fist. His hand was shaking with anger. Time for some more dick dictums. Dick dictum number eight. When you really want to punch something, you really probably shouldn't. Connor recited the words inwardly like some sort of desperate mantra. If he didn't manage to calm himself down, he was liable to slam his fist right into Stanley's face. Outside the car, the traffic remained at a standstill. Kano chafed against a feeling of utter futility. One after another, his uncertainties came to nag at him. Ah, uh, uncertainties are my least favorite things! Was Maria still safe? What happened to what had happened to Otomi and Titano, her bodyguard? Of 
force the salva. Oh god, no, then the last two hours of the game are all gonna be about extraterritorial rights. And now, on top of all this, it struck Kana was rather careless to send Sasayama away with al Haram without any backup. Now that Jack had alerted him to the presence of a dangerous international mastermind still on the loose. Oh my god. What if what the what the dollar store guy saw was Sasayama letting him go? I'll call wrong go. We'll see how the story goes. Fighting back his fit of peak, Kano got on his cell phone. Never heard of that expression. To do something impulsively out of irritation. Resentment or the like. Similar to doing something in a huff. I see. I really want to see what Sasayama's up to. He dialed up Sasayama. He wanted to make sure his partner had gone to al Karan back to the precinct safely. Sasayama picked up almost right away. Kano, what's up? How are things on your end? Any problems getting al Karan back? Ugh. Oh my god. Okay. It's Titano. Wow. I've got Titano taking care of him. Wait, what? Kano could hardly believe his ears. You're in touch with Titano. Tateno is missing, though, he asked. He could hear the shock in his own voice. Yeah, just bumped into him over at the precinct a little while ago. Then he is safe. Kona felt a surge of relief. What about it early, then? Oh my god, so also he could be lying. You know, that's another choice, so yeah. I'm gonna say it now, it's absolutely gonna be either Sasayama or Tateno. Right now, it's looking a bit more like Tateno. Either way, Kano is going to be hurt by this. Yep. Oh, the yeah, Eblis. Yep, I agree. Exactly. Yep. Either Sasayama is lying, which makes him sus, or Tateno is sus. Absolutely. What about Itomi, then? Stanley glanced over at him, curious. Tateno says he lost track of her somehow. And then he got called back to the precinct, apparently. Tateno was... is Kano's hero. He, like, modeled himself after Tateno, and that's how he got all the dick dictums and everything. So that's gonna hurt him real bad. Tateno had lost track of her? That's not like him. Kano thought. Since he was heading back there anyway, handed our guy over to him. Sasayama said. I see. Kana was glad to hear that Tateno was alright, but his relief was tempered by a surge of anger at the thought of what happened to Atomi. Now I'm back to telling the attaché case. Sasayama continued. Today's my wife's birthday, you know. My plan is to wrap this thing up ASAP so we can celebrate tonight. I've already got a present and everything. I envy you, man. Closing his eyes, 
Connor took a moment to picture Rumi. But Jizuo's face popped into his mind's eye right alongside her. God damn it. I am so lucky that my mother-in-law is so nice. Well, just hang in there, buddy. Even if your girlfriend is just a picture of Masami Nagahama. <laughs> Midoriyama Academy graduate and national celebrity. Her popularity shows no signs of slowing down after she played the female lead in such films as The Beast That Hoarded Gold at the Heart of the World and The Swidden Fort. Damn! Whoa! That's a badass name of a movie. Holy shit. I'd watch that movie just because the title's so cool. And the Swidden Fortress. That sounds like something from Danganronpa. Like, I remember one of the chapter names of, uh... Uh, I think the last chapter of Danganronpa Alter Despair Girls had a name similar to that. There is another nationally famous actress with the same name. But it is a nationally known fact that two are completely separate people. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> Still snickering, Sasayama hung up. Kano bit his lip and slid his phone back into his pocket. Yeah, just because he's a detective doesn't mean he's the detective. Exactly, poet. At long last, traffic began to move again. Almost as soon as it did, however, Stanley had to slam on the brakes. The abrupt stop made Kano smack his head against the windshield. Hey, what gives? Look, Stanley said. He gestured with his chin. Yep, 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 yep. It's either Sasayama or Tateno, who's the evil mastermind. Kano couldn't believe his eyes. There, walking along the sidewalk ahead, was Alcaron, very much not in custody. What the hell? Kano shouted, already hopping out of the car. Stanley was right behind him. They crept on from their target as silently as possible, then rushed him once they were close. Well, that's close. They got him back. In a moment, they had subdued him. Kano used his own body weight to hold all Kawaran down. What are you doing out here? He demanded. Oh, hey, guess you didn't get the memo, huh? Alcaron flashed a coy grin. They let me go. Let you go? I think your buddy might have the hearing problems. Alcaron said to Stanley. I'm a free man. Kano turned and glared at Stanley. What's he talking about? Oh. What's he talking about? No idea. First things first. Get this guy back to the precinct. I'll enter the sink and syndicate and hang out by my cell. Oh, so he's gonna see all the dead bodies. You don't think this is weird? Kano asked. I mean, what the heck is this guy doing on the loose again? What matters is that he is free. Maybe he's telling the truth about being let go. What the fuck? But that's ridiculous. And I guess he must have escaped on his own. Stanley replied. In either case, your butt is screwed up royally. Now it's on y'all to unscrew things, son. None of this sat right with Kano. But the fact remained that he couldn't just let all Karan go. He gave Stanley detailed directions to the hangout, and the car sped away towards Yoyogi.
Then Kano headed back to the precinct with his captive. Trying to reassure himself that he might learn something from questioning al Karaman that would help resolve the case. This is so cool. Like, so, uh, yeah, either Tateno or Sasayama is the traitor. And it's going to be so devastating to Kano either way. Yeah, I bet since Tateno is someone we haven't seen, it might be, um, that, you know, that, that could be evidence either way, because since they haven't revealed his face. Oh my god. Like, one thing that could happen is, uh, Kano is, like, walking in on Tateno thinking he's the traitor in some way. And like, and he's actually not, but he's killed before he can say Sasayama is a true traitor or something like that. And then like Sasayama reveals himself dramatically. Kano sat opposite Al Kawaran in the in interrogation room. He's been attempting to interview the suspect for about a quarter of an hour. Al Kawaran sat ramrod stiff, not responding to any prompts or questions. All right, a real interrogation right now. What time is it right now? He asked. They've taken away his watch, his wallet, a small knife, and his keychain. This was the third time he'd asked to know the time. Why are you so concerned what time it is? Probably because there's a bomb that's going to go off. Kano asked. Alcavaran gave no reply. Are you waiting on something? Again, the suspect was staunchly silent. Connor wasn't sure what to make of this, but he took a look at his watch. It's around two o'clock, he said. Oh, it looks like we're going to get on a cliffhanger soon. What time exactly? It's 2.18. Oh, never mind. Oh, I thought, um... Okay, so Kano actually has a long way to go. So much has happened, though. 2.18 and how many seconds? Look, just cut the crap! Kano grabbed the prisoner by the collar. What the hell are you people after? Al Kavaran repeated his question. What time is it right now? With a growl of aggravation, Kano shoved his wristwatch in Al Kavaran's face. Ah, it's 2.20. Al Kavaran said. Oh god, something's gonna happen. Okay then. That should do it. What? What does that mean? <coughs> the interrogation went on for several more hours! Despite Kano's best efforts, however, al Ron said nothing more. During all that time, the case continued to develop in unexpected ways, but Kano stuck in the interrogation room and nothing about until everything was already over and done. Bad end! Oh no... What did I miss? That was such a long time since I made a choice. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Someone could do something at... Okay. While well, Connor performed admirably in recapturing Tariq al Kamaran, ironically, his actions actually disrupted the investigation. Maybe letting the syndicate run free for the time being really was the right call. Someone could do something at 1340 that throws a wrench into Kano's activities, thanks to the involvement of unrelated parties. And Kano's reaction will make the investigation play out differently. Okay, so it's a bad end. Okay, I see. So who can do something at 1340?
Tama can. But we still can't go further with her. What can Minori Kawa do at 1340? No, that's the choice of whether to interview him or not. Well, either way, we can continue with Achi. Okay, crashing into the car. In a matter of moments, the street was clogged with a long line of stopped vehicles. Achi and Hitomi's pursuers remained on the other side and did not pursue. Okay, that, that was crazy. Oh, that was Hitomi, god damn it. Okay, that, that was crazy. Hitomi panted as she caught her breath. Well, you know what they say. Idle feet are the devil's playthings. That's idle hands, Hachi. Hands. It's idle hands. Whatever. At least they've gotten away. Come on, let's go. Achi led the way down several twisting side streets before slowing his pace. By now, Hitomi was slumped and panting heavily. He wanted to give her some time to rest, but if they just hung around, their pursuers might still find them. He looked around and spotted a multi-tenant building. The nearest door was open. Bundles of flyers were set out near the entrance. Flyers for Au revoir. This 22nd performance by the theater troupe The Wandering Angels. It tells the tale of a man named Ryu looking back on his 100 year life as a warrior. Oh, that's cool. The performance features wire action as, as its major set piece. With Ryu and his rival Shido flying high through the air, doing battle with the magical Muramasa blade and beam saber. <laughs> My god. Respectively. Kind of badass. Achi peeked inside and saw piles of plywood and painted lumber. It looked like this was a storeroom for a theater stage props and scenery. We can hide out in here. He said, um, but Natomi hesitated, but Achi gave her hand a little chug. It'll be fine. There's nobody around. They stepped inside the storeroom and Achi quickly shut the door behind them. We should probably rest for a bit. Take a short rest. Get our spells back. He said. There was a wooden platform set up beside a large piece of plywood. Achi picked up a magazine that had fallen on the floor and spread it out atop the platform's dusty surface. Oh, it's the gossip magazine. Oh my god, are they going to find a, uh, a scratch card? There are many Muramasa blades in anime, Void Dweller. My god, there are literally, I'm pretty sure, dozens, if not hundreds, in different continuities of things. It's Muramasa and Masamune and, like, uh, and uh, a couple of others that are constantly repeated in many different RPGs. Takamika Nozuchi, I think one of them is. I forget. Takamika Zuchi, I think, yeah, is one of them. Like so many different uh, powerful swords in, in games and stuff like that. Here. Now you can sit without getting your clothes dirty. 
Thank you. Hitomi quietly took a seat. We should probably turn off our cell phones. Ashi said. I haven't, Boy Dweller. It could be really bad if they rang at the wrong moment. The two powered off their phones. Ashi took a cursory look around. It didn't look like there was any way in or out besides the door they'd come in through. There was a single window set in the wall, but it wouldn't open far enough to let them through. Oh god. That's terrifying. Ah! Oh. Ah! Hitomi let out a quiet gasp. Someone was outside the storeroom. Ati put a finger to his lips, and Hitomi gave a, gave a fearful nod. The window's frosted glass blocked any real view in or out. So long as they stayed quiet, they ought to be ought to be safe. God, that is fucking terrifying. Whoever was outside pressed their face to the frosted glass, trying to get a glimpse inside. The blurry visage of the foreigner who'd attacked them was dimly visible. Like the man with the cane before him? This guy was quick, quick to catch up. The man pounded on the glass. Ati swallowed the lump in his throat. If this guy got in, they had nowhere to run. Ati turned to Hitomi. Uh, I think it's best to stay in place. No, wait, I didn't want to use that. No! Oh, God. Oh, good, it didn't register my click for some reason. Thank God. We'll be fine. Just sit tight. Hitomi clutched onto Achi's arm, hard. Can I help you with something? Said a casual voice from outside. They saw their pursuer react at once, pulling back from the window. That's a, just our storeroom, you know, the voice added. Ati heard footsteps scampering away. The kidnapper had run off. Oh, I see. The guy The guy told him to, to fuck off. Woo! Ati exchanged a glance with the Hitomi and let out a tiny sigh. You guys are too silly. There were more voices coming from outside now. What was up with that guy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's talking. Oh, whatever, let's just hurry up and get stuff tidied up. Ah, oh, man, my throat's raw. I don't know who's talking. Okay, it's two guys. It sounded like a conversation between two men. The storeroom door opened up and the men clomped their way inside. They clomping. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, these are two two new guys. Okay. To Minari Toyaka and Taro Toga. Two members of the theater troupe, the Wandering Angels. Takaya is the Wandering Angels star actor, playing the lead role of Ryu. In today's performance of Au Revoir, the troupe's 22nd piece. Last night, he slept completely naked and got a cold. 
leading to the sore throat he has now. Toga is the stage director, handling things behind the scene. He's very irritated that Chinichi Bando, in charge of the props, seemed to have gone AWOL. Uh, it's two random guys. Uh, let's... So, uh, what, what are we getting? Uh, uh. Let's grab all these folding chairs over there. Huh? Yeah. The producer said we're going to need a little more seats all of a sudden. Mr. Owari said that? Calling all out for the troops last hurrah, huh? Beats me, man. In no real hurry? The one went about carting the folding chairs away. Okay, so some randos. They didn't notice Achi and Natomi sitting silently in the shadows. <clears throat> not to change the subject, but how come we're using a dry ice machine and not a smoke machine? Uh, maybe that's why my throat's bothering me. Uh, uh. They might be using the dry ice to store a virus. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Nobody's even operating it. It's all drawing a ton of power. Yep. They probably put the, uh... You can't fool me. I use dry ice all the time to store stuff for science. Yep, they're probably storing the, the virus shit in there. Yeah, it's pretty weird. No one's even operating and this is wrong a ton of power. I think it's def defective? <clears throat> Auntie and Atomi waited for the two men to finish up. If they were spotted, it would probably cause a scene. And worse still, it might alert the men who were hunting them. Liquid helium? Oh god, no, Void Dweller. That's way, that's, that's like ridiculously cold. That is beyond dry ice, beyond even uh, liquid nitrogen. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's the one, oh wow. Eblis, that's the one Minori Kawa is meant to say that to them th that it's broken. Oh, wow. I forgot about that, Eblis. Once they carried off the rest of the folding chairs, the men closed the storeroom door. And a foreigner could still be somewhere nearby. Though, so Watcher decided they should hide out in the room a little longer. Gah, this blows. I want to get back out there and look for that blue van ASAP, but... Achi trailed off as something occurred to him. Wait a second. Now that's weird. Huh? And Tomi looked at him inquiringly. The kidnappers probably have the ransom money, yeah? Achi said. That's right. And then they told you that your sister was in some blue minivan. Isn't that kind of weird? What do you mean? Did you figure that your sister was in the minivan by herself? Well, yes. If one of the kidnappers were with her, they wouldn't need to send me to go get her. Right. Aji said. Yet the fact was that as soon as the kidnappers had their money, they could have just let Atomi's sister out of the vehicle and just run off. There was no point in sending Atomi to fetch her personally. A, lo a look of revelation dawned on Atomi's face. Oh, 
What? The minivan had already left. That minivan had already left Okunsaka, she said. And it came back while we were there waiting for it. Aji finished. He thought back to his earlier run-in with the blue vehicle. So then inside that minivan... There had been a bunch of foreigners inside. Which meant... Yes, I actually you said uh, it takes a while to get things, Evelyn. Okay. The kidnappers didn't have any intention of giving her. Oh, the kidnappers didn't have any intention of giving her sister back. The more Ashi thought about it. The less sense it made for them to send a Tomi to get her. There has to be some other reason they wanted a Tomi to get to that minivan. But what? Do you think they were trying to kidnap me too? That's it! Aji clapped his hands together. Then they let your sister go and demand a ransom for you. And then they just keep cycling it like that back and forth until they had all your money. And then they make her deliver the ransom money for your release. Did you? Oh my god! That's incredible that you were able to make earrings, Jishan, seriously. They only got like infinite ransom money by constantly abducting one to an F. That's too hilarious. Seems a little far fetched. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Now that she'd said so, Archie realized it was kind of a ridiculous idea. Still, what if the kidnappers really were trying to kidnap me? Natomi said. As in, like, they accidentally adopted. Abducted the wrong twin. I mean, I guess that would have been easy to botch up. That would imply that they wanted me specifically, and not my sister. Tell me pause briefly in thought. I don't know, maybe you're hotter than your sister or something? Archie, we're twins. Archie, Archie suggested with enthusiasm. And tell me shook her head. That can't be it. If anything, it's the other way around. Oh, wow. Compared to my sister, I'm just... Oh, that's not true. You're very pretty. Whoa, hey, stop right there. Achi had to interrupt her. You're not just anything. Please don't. I am, um, I'm just... Aw, tears have welled up in Toby's eyes. Why? Why did this have to happen to her? Why not me? Whoa, hey. Come on, don't cry. I'm sorry. Cheer up. It's like that song says. Cheer up, it's like the song says. Don't just stand there. What those tears weigh? That one. 
You know it? Is that Ayakamiki? Yeah, that's the one. Put your hand in mine. Every single bee's a lie. Huh? You know, every single bee's a lie. Your tone, we let out a giggle. Everything will be all right. Oh my God. I see we have some poisoned rationality going on in Achi's mind here. Huh? You've got the lyrics wrong. It's everything will be all right. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that makes more sense, I guess. Achi's mouth curled into a sheepish smile. All right, I think we've laid low long enough. Achi said at last. Think we should be on our way? He's about to get to his feet when he heard voices outside the storeroom again. Yikes, that was pretty careless. Yikes, that was pretty careless of us. Yeah, we definitely gotta watch it. <sighs> the theater guys from earlier had returned, and they sounded a bit panicked. Tayaka is the wandering angel star actor. But lately, in addition to appearing on the stage, he's been taking on TV drama and film work as well. The next role he's stated for is Sun TV's upcoming suspense drama, Sumo Queen 2, where he will play the referee who utters the lean line. Looks like things are getting heavy. Boo. Upon discovering a victim's dying message inscribed in one corner of the sumo ring. Sumo rings don't have corners! Jeez. Her folks have been messing with the storm a bunch recently. Uh, yeah. Uh, what did you use behind it? Some juvenile delinquents. Like a gang? Wow, that takes me way back. Alright, let's hurry on back. Ati rushed over to the door. Oh no! He tried turning the knob, but the door wouldn't budge. Oh, come on. Are you freaking kidding me? He faced frantically around the room, pulling at his hair. We're locked in. Love this music. And that door was the only way in or out. Ati and Tomer were well and truly trapped inside the storeroom. Oh, we got a bad ending, I bet. This is all my fault! It was my idea to hide her in the first place! He bowed to Tomer repeatedly. We're never gonna be able to find that blue minivan now. Guess we'll have to get someone on the outside to help us, Tomer replied. She scowled thoughtfully. They powered their phones back on in order to call for help. Oh, I told me chirped. That's mine. She took a look at the LCD display. It's an email from Mr. Tanaka. Ah, huh, okay. Until we began typing out a response with practices. More wild delusions rose up in Achi's mind. Ideas or fantasies cause, cause contradicting one's mind with no logical or factual basis. 
People can become deluded for varying reasons about a whole host of different subjects, thankfully. Oh, thankfully. All two solutions here are of ultimately, har ultimately harmless sort. Stealing a quick glance at Hitomi, he noticed her gazing happily at her phone screen. His delusions ran even more wild. Oh my god, this is too funny! While he was still f fretting furiously, Hitomi finished typing a response. So, uh, what did you wind up saying? Achi asked. I explained the situation. They were trapped in a storeroom, you got some guys chasing after you, and you're looking for some van? Yes. I also asked him to please keep this secret from my family and the police. Whoever this Tanaka guy was. I told me she was to put a lot of trust in him. A short while later, Hitomi's phone ch chimed in with a fly. She checked the screen in a flash, all eagerness. Achi, let's see. Good novel, so what's that? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna have a mask. Let's see. Yeah, it's just like Choco Vision. Yes, the street theater. I'm gonna have a mask, but I think this is a good place to stop. So, uh, what's the Tanaka guy have to say? A hint of jealousy slipped into his voice. Okay, um. Okay, yep, we have a choice here. Okay, good. Okay, you guys. I think this is the good place to stop for now. Next time. Nakano still has a bad end, but that has to do with something else. Minorikawa is done. Osawa is, w is weirdly not done. It's like, you know, Talma is locked off, so basically we just have... Uh, we basically are going to continue with Achi next time, you guys, on, on Friday. So Thursday, some more Achi Nalako. And on Friday, we'll be back with 428 Shibuya Scramble. Love this game. Until next time, I will say, so long, farewell, and we the same good night. You're all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.